So, I guess I'm the bad guy now. If that's how it's going to be, then that's how it's going to be. Welcome to the Day of the Rake, the show where you got to get out of my way. The people have to be told. If you'd cared from the start, none of this would have happened. But of course, you must protect Vite's new utopia. And what's one more body amongst its foundations? I got that mask for free because uh, cause the Chinese messed up. <laughs> Dang it. This, this is a little bit um, immersion breaking when the one guy walks in front slash behind me. Oh yeah, so for the last sort of leg of the show, the last bit of the show, a few things I want to discuss. One is the concept of super straight. Super straight has been trending. It's hilarious. I think it's really funny. It's sort of like the it's okay to be white campaign where people take kind of far left methods of attack, appropriate them for themselves to expose what it is that the far left is doing. So this is the concept behind super straight. It started with this super straight started with this young guy who just made a TikTok video. He's like 16 years old. Maybe it predates that, but that's where it's getting popularity right now. So learn the difference and stop being a bigot. <laughs> So because the, because the LGBT community is claiming that, so for instance, if, if I'm, you know, if I'm a man and I'm straight, that means that I'm attracted to women, but they include trans women in that equation. So they include biological men who transition into women. Like if they try and say that if I as a man am not, attra if I'm straight and I'm not attracted to a trans woman, then that makes me some kind of bigot. So the argument is that, well, no, it's just my preference. People get to have their preferences. Don't be bigoted against other people's preferences. And my preference is just that I'm super straight. I'm super straight. I'm attracted to the other gender and not the transgender version of that. There's also super gay, super lesbian. And people who have a hard time with this, they're super phobic. They're super phobes. We super straight, we are now a minority and uh, we expect to receive the perks of being a minority. Uh, there's been some funny videos floating around. Well, I don't know if they're funny, they're awkward. There's this one in particular I saw where this guy tells his wife, it's like he's, he's like coming out of the closet to his wife and he's like, I have something to tell you, I'm serious. I'm not straight. And there's this moment where it's like she thinks she thinks he's gay. And then he's like, I'm super straight. And then she kind of rolls her eyes or whatever, but it's pretty rough prank because there's a moment there where she definitely is questioning whether or not their marriage is gonna be in trouble. And so this is the idea behind super straight, just to give an indication of some of the threads that have happened. So someone says, hi, yes, nobody who is going against you. <laughs> so this would be from a sort of member of the LGBT community. No one who is going against you is super phobic. Straight people haven't been discriminated against historically in our societies, which is why people have an issue with you. You are crying about discrimination, claiming you need a safe space, which is why people are probably quite annoyed with you. When I came out as bi, I wasn't lucky enough to be introduced to the lack of hostility that straight people get. So then this person replies, I don't know, it sounds pretty straight phobic. Have you tried listening to us and understanding our lived experience? Because that's the basis for a lot of the claims of discrimination is lived experience. So then the person says, I can't do that because whenever I try to have a discussion, I just get super phobe thrown in my face like someone, some magic word that's going to get me to magically change my mind. The person says, if you don't want to be called a super phobe, then don't be a super phobe. <laughs> It's perfect. It's the perfect dismantling. This is what James Lindsay engages in a lot of times on uh, on TikTok. Uh, again, this is the LGBT community discovering what's happening. They say some kind of dam broke on social media and there seems to be a sudden influx of attempts at double inversion. People are using the super straight hashtag to claim that they too are oppressed and they demand to be included into the LGBTQ plus community. It quickly became viral and the woke are losing their minds over it. Anti-woke fool James Lindsay is already hinting at hashtag super racist hashtag to subvert the anti-racist narrative. The woke are now trying to hammer in that only they hold the keys to the narrative and people who try to beat them at their own game are dangerous. So I believe this is a member of the LGBT community 
Oh, uh, they're just upset because the, there's a super straight Twitter account that says, what is super straight? This is a new sexuality. That means that you are only attracted to cisgender women or men. This was made due to an influx of people saying that you aren't straight if you aren't attracted to trans men or women when they're part of the LGBT community now. Hashtag super straight. Oh yeah, okay, so here's where James Lindsay kicks in. He says, might need to make super anti-racist into a thing. Super anti-racists are reasonably colorblind without denying real racism when it occurs. They treat every person as an individual, not a member of a racial category. They are against all forms of racism, including woke neo-racism. Super anti-racists know that racism comes from putting social significance into racial categories where it doesn't belong, usually for discrimination and prejudice, and they are against that. Super anti-racists reject actual stereotyping, scapegoating, and discrimination. <clears throat> it's not enough to not be anti-racist. You have to be super anti-racist. I, I find this whole thing fascinating. I find it amazing. This is something, again, I'm really trying to move away from conversations about lockdown because I'm, I'm so bored. I'm so bored of all this Corona stuff. But this clip came up that I think is uh, it's pretty epic to bring back an old word. Um, it happened last year sometime. This guy might be some sort of newscaster. He might have some sort of background in radio. We're going to watch it really quick. This is at a town hall. Ziegler and then Deborah Baber will be in after. After waiting for two hours and now getting two minutes, I'll get right to the point. Uh, this board is pretending that for the last three months, your emperor, Dr. Levin, has not been against a mask declaration. Now, all of a sudden, we're pretending that masks are everything, even forcing speakers to use masks. I would like the board to take a position. Was Dr. Levin wrong for those three months? And if he was this wrong, why has he not been removed? Why has he not been fired for being so catastrophically wrong? Or do you not really believe he was wrong? You're just wearing these masks because it is a signal of your great virtue. Because for the last three months, we have not worn them. And Ventura County has done outstandingly well and continues to do outstandingly well because we are not Los Angeles. We are not New York City. We never were going to be any of those things. Ironically, this is one of the few things Dr. Levin was actually right about. He has been wrong about everything. He is the one who told us we would have four to 600 hospitalizations a day. He, he, he revised that to two to 400 a day. We still haven't reached that in one day. We're barely over 200 for the entire ordeal that you guys have put us through. We now are panicked over 51 total hospitalizations in a county with eight hospitals. Can you people do math? Can you please do basic math and understand where we are on this? This is not a crisis. You, however, have created one. You, in an effort to try to prevent all death, but we've had 43 deaths, have now ended all relevant life. And you should all be ashamed of yourselves. And this will never be forgotten, ever be forgotten. You will all be held accountable eventually in this life or the next. You all better hope there is no hell because when you die, that's where you're going. And guess what? You're not gonna be dying of COVID either. Thank you. I think it was Jimmy Howard who did post that, sent that my way. He's in the chats right now. Um, definitely boomer energy. I wouldn't recommend telling people that they're going to go to hell <laughs> on the basis of how they handle COVID policy, per se. <laughs> but... <laughs> But all I'm saying is be careful of how you handle other people because that ha may have a, may be an indicator of other things. Yeah, imagine if we all had that passion. All right, uh, so the final thing that I was thinking of sharing on this show today, I saw this clip from Sam Hyde. It was, it was really similar to something that I was discussing on my last stream where on the last stream we were going through the continuum, the transition from healthy conflict to sort of kangaroo courts and, and an unhealthy 
process and someone asked what is after red what's after the final stage and i said well that's when the snake eats their own tail it eats its own tail that's the that's the transhumanist utopia that doesn't exist you know that's where i am right now this is fictional it's not real you know so sam hyde said something that is actually really similar i think recently i just discovered it the other day it's in the same vein as the idea that i was expressing I figured we'd watch a little bit of that. Draining. Ten hours of that, that's draining, man. These AIs that they're making, these smarter child conversation bots. I think there was some there was some AI development recently in like making a bot that finds fake news posts on Facebook or something. And the point the point is just that none of this is gonna bring about a, a utopia. I mean may, maybe it will, but it's like the, the tech companies are gonna like try their hardest to make sure that it becomes hell. The promises are so weak. TensorFlow can recognize a picture of a dog. Maybe I'm missing something? Is that, is that what I've been reading about in science fiction books? Uh, uh, Isaac Asimov, they built a computer that could recognize a dog. They built a computer that could play chess better than any human. We f hey, you know, I, this is big AI news. They finally built a computer that could beat a human at Go. It only took a warehouse full of like petabyte per second data servers to be able to beat a human full of computers at Go. Sign me up if all that means is that my medical history and every financial transaction I've ever made has to be made public, so be it. I need to be able to remote start my car with my voice. That's the internet of things. That's the promise of the next 20 years of technology. Guys, life expectancy has not gone up significantly, okay? And uh, you know, all my clothes are made in China and uh, I, don't have, I don't have any health insurance or savings. I'm in debt right now. Um, and I can say, Alexa, turn down the temperature two degrees and it'll communicate with my Nest thermostat and turn the temperature down two degrees, thus saving me a walk over to that thermostat over there, I'm not gonna complain. And if the price of that technological innovation is that I get fired from my job because of some someone digging up uh, a post I made on uh, Quora three years ago, right? Hey, I'm not gonna stand in front of the train of innovation, the freight train of innovation that's uh, coming our way. So anyway, that's Sam Hyde. I think he can be found on like Gumroad or something if you want to pay to see his content. It exists somewhere. I guess there's a lot that could be said about Sam Hyde, but he sure gets certain things. So for instance, if, if I'm, you know, if I'm a man. So for instance, if, if I'm, you know, if I'm a man.